Thank you, Elsi Markov, and thank you, uh, distinguished diplomats and friends. It's an honor for me to be here at the Menachem Begin Heritage Center. Uh, we're celebrating Israel's 70th anniversary, and we can celebrate at the same time, and for good reason, for three reasons, uh, Menachem Begin's legacy. There are many reasons to celebrate Begin's legacy, but uh, I believe that three things make him stand out as a, a true hero of our people. The first one is liberty. Begin was a great champion and fighter for Israel's independence. Uh, he, in his memoir, The Revolt, he wrote that the be-all and end-all of his ideology was freedom, the freedom and happiness of the individual, also the freedom of our people, which is what that book describes. He understood that uh, there can be no neutrality in the fight for freedom. He wrote, if you love freedom, you hate slavery. And Begin hated all forms of tyranny. He wrote that one's very self-respect as a human being lies in resistance to evil. And that meant sacrifice. Begin was willing to sacrifice for the liberty of our people. He wrote, the idea of freedom had captured our hearts completely. The individual identified himself with that idea. And if it meant the surrender of his personal liberty, he surrendered it. If it required that he leave his family, he left it. If it involved the enduring of torture, he accepted it. If it called for continuous exposure to danger, he resigned himself to it. If it demanded his life, he gave it. So in many ways, Menachem Begin symbolized the essence of our struggle for liberty. Uh, he fought for it. He sacrificed for it. Um, he achieved it. And uh, it is our struggle to be a free people in our ancestral homeland that guided his life uh, and he, uh, he serves as an emblem and as an example for future generations because, because the battle is never over. And for the purpose of having future under, uh, generation understand the necessity of sacrifice and the meaning of Begin's life, uh, I think that this center serves a unique purpose. Uh, I always say that you made it too small that the traffic flow is insufficient. How many people visit every uh, year? Not enough. 150,000, it should be 350,000. And we should uh, find the means to achieve this. But I want young Israelis to come here so that they understand fully the importance of uh, being a free people in our own land, unapologetic Jews, proud Jews, this is the only way that we can maintain our heritage and secure our future. The second reason uh, Begin <coughs> is remembered is because of security. Begin understood that security comes first. All the other attributes of independence ultimately pale and wither away if you cannot defend your security. In 1981, he dispatched the IDF to destroy the nuclear reactor of a genocidal tyrant that called for the annihilation of Israel. His policy was simple. His policy was right. He said that uh, we will not allow regimes that call for Israel's destruction to acquire nuclear weapons. Uh, does anyone remember how the world reacted to this strike? This is the strike that genuinely blocked Saddam Hussein's path to nuclear weapons. Well, the UN passed Resolution 487, strongly condemning Israel. A leading uh, European diplomat, I'm now the foreign minister, I have to be careful. <laughs> he said the strike was, the, the, this airstrike on Saddam's nuclear reactor was unacceptable. The New York Times, of course, criticized it. What's new? Uh, Begin was unflinching. And Israel's policy has not changed since Begin. Israel will not allow regimes that seek our annihilation
to acquire nuclear weapons. This is why This is why we opposed so resolutely the Iran deal, because it gives Iran a clear path to a nuclear arsenal. It allows, over a few years, unlimited enrichment of uranium, the core ingredient required to produce nuclear bombs and nothing else. And uh, it also does not deal with the ballistic missiles that can deliver this weapon to many, many countries. This is why this deal has to be either fully fixed or fully nixed. Uh, and I believe that uh, Begin exemplified for us the commitment to defense Israel's security at all costs, although I believe that in so doing, in the case of uh, Iraq and now in the case of Iran, the security of the entire world is at stake. There is a, a third reason why I think Begin is remembered with unique fondness, and that is inclusivity. Begin opened up Israeli society. Uh, up to uh, <coughs> the election of uh, uh, the great election in, in which uh, the Likud won the victory under his leadership, uh, the government never changed. There was always one party, uh, and uh, many people felt that they were out of the loop, that they weren't part of Israeli society. And this changed very dramatically with Begin. He immediately began a program to upgrade what we call the neighborhoods. Uh, that means the, those neighborhoods in uh, uh, development towns and in Tel Aviv and the center of uh, the country that were left uh, untended, they were dilapidated. And in the physical uh, restructuring of those neighborhoods was really uh, a psychological uh, restructuring, telling people all strata of Israeli society, you're all part of this one country. You all deserve a place of honor and integrity. You all can be leaders in this country. And he changed this. He brought young mayors from uh, development towns into the Likud, and he truly revolutionized Israeli society and Israeli politics in the best sense of the word, inclusivity, an open, inclusive society, open to all. And this has made Israel a tremendous, tremendously vibrant country. Uh, these are the three reasons that uh, uh, I think Begin is remembered with affection and respect, liberty, security, inclusivity. But there are many others. I think the most important one is passion. Begin had a passion for our people, for our reconstituted place in history, for justice and truth. I remember that I was um, a young diplomat. I'd just been, uh, I just entered diplomatic life uh, as the number two in our embassy in uh, uh, Washington. Uh, Israel was maligned as though Israeli uh, the Israeli army had sent uh, or allowed uh, or even dispatched uh, Christian Lebanese to uh, commit a massacre. And uh, he called me up and he said, uh, Mr. Netanyahu, he knew me because he knew my father. He said, uh, please take a pen and a pencil and please write this blood light. Started, uh, he said, I want an ad in the New York Times, uh, blood libel. Uh, and he wrote the ad, and I wrote the ad, and it was written from the heart, from the mind too, but from the heart, because he couldn't accept the defamation of the Jewish people. He, uh, who uh, understood the horrors of the Holocaust and knew what we were fighting for, knew what values we stood for, he couldn't accept this slandering of uh, uh, of the Jewish state. And I felt that passion, and I think every Israeli felt that passion. And I think that many around the world felt that passion too. And even though some may not have agreed with him, they respected him for it, because they knew it was true. So for, uh, for these reasons and more, we remember Begin. You asked me, however, uh, to talk about our position in the world. Well, I think Begin helped change it in many ways. Uh, I think that uh, today Israel's diplomatic position is 
better than it's ever been because many countries around the world understand what Israel can offer. The security we can offer against terrorism that plagues so many lands, so many continents. In fact, virtually all lands and all continents. And the, uh, uh, the benefits that our ingenuity can bring to all lands and all continents. This is uh, taking shape before our eyes. There are many distinguished representatives here. Uh, I've been put right between uh, the ambassador of the United States who knows this very well. And our alliance is as strong as it's ever been. Uh, we look forward in a few days to uh, open up the American Embassy in Jerusalem. And we are deeply appreciative of President Trump's historic decision. <laughs> I just came from uh, my office, and right next to uh, my office is the Israeli cabinet room. And in the entrance of this cabinet room are two documents. One, President uh, uh, Truman's historic uh, recognition of uh, the Jewish state. And right next to it, President Trump's historic recognition of Jerusalem as Israel's capital. So our alliance with the United States has been steadfast and growing uh, stronger and stronger year by year. But equally, we appreciate the fact that we have these relations, uh, growing relations with so many others. And I'm seated uh, right next to the Ambassador of India. It's good to see you. And I can tell you that uh, I had a wonderful trip to India after uh, Prime Minister Modi and I waited in the waters of the Khedera beach. Uh, it was a, a tremendously moving experience to see the support and enthusiasm for Israel in India. And we see this everywhere. We see it uh, uh, in so many countries, in so many lands, uh, who understand that uh, their people can have a better life. Uh, by cooperating with Israel in so many fields. Um, I, I have to say that uh, uh, one of the meetings that I remember most was um, a meeting in the United Nations. Yes, uh, Herzi, the United Nations. No, it's not completely nothing, you know. It has its uses and its purposes, and we seek uh, the alliances with many countries and uh, the goodwill of the international community. We don't always get it, and certainly we don't get it at the UN, but at the UN I met uh, many, many African leaders who came to a special exposition that we did on Israeli technology uh, in Africa. And one after the other, these young Israelis, men and women, showed what they were doing to help uh, villagers have water. An African woman would have to walk four hours one direction to a distant well and walk back four hours to bring water to her children. And Israeli um, innovation gave her water from the air. You know, Moses hit the rock and got water. These Israelis hit the air and they get water. It's miraculous. Uh, and uh, anything that you can think of in agriculture, in health, in uh, IT, uh, Israeli technology was revolutionizing, um, is revolutionizing Africa. And one African leader said to me afterwards, he said, tell me, tell me, what is your secret? How come the small people is making, making all these tremendous things? What is your secret? Because we want to replicate it. <laughs> and I said, well, you know, if I have to explain what our secret is, it's uh, it's a unique combination. We are an ancient people, one of the most ancient peoples on earth. Uh, we're an ancient people with deep roots in our traditions, in our ancestral homeland, but we throw our branches to the sky with never-ending curiosity and with uh, uh, th this desire to change things for the better to fix the world, uh, we call it tikkun olam. And this combination of, of uh, a deep heritage uh, and this constant thirst for innovation is what makes the Jewish people so unique. I think it's what makes the Jewish state so unique. And I'm very glad that so many countries around the world today are discovering these uh, capacities of Israel and that our friendships are blossoming as never before. I think much of this 
we have to thank for Menachem Begin. I think if Begin was uh, with us today, I think he'd be proud. He sees that we have a, a thriving democracy that guarantees the freedom of uh, the individual, the freedom of worship to all religions, just as Begin believed. We have a, a tolerant society that improves the lives of people around the world, just as Benachem Begin believed. We're at peace with Egypt, a peace that Begin worked for and achieved, and we have peace with Jordan. And our hand is extended to peace to all our neighbors. And I believe that something is changing, perhaps not in our immediate vicinity with our Palestinian neighbors, but beyond that, there is no question that many Arab governments and quite a few of the Arab publics are re-examining their attitudes towards Israel because of all the reasons that I mentioned, including Iran. Uh, we have, uh, I think, much to be proud for, about, and I think we have Menachem Begin to be proud about. So today I ask everyone listening to me to honor the memory of Menachem Begin. If you haven't already done so, read the revolt. You'll understand what a true hero this man was. And join me and all Israelis in celebrating our 70th anniversary. I have no doubt that in another 70 years, Israel will be even stronger and more prosperous than it is today. And Menachem Begin would be very, very proud. Thank you.